When we work with learners on area and perimeter, we need to spend significant time getting them to really understand the notions of area and perimeter before we rush to formulae. But we also don't want getting them to understand the notion of area and perimeter simply to remain at the level of counting the number of blocks. We also want to extend that out and in the process start developing their geometric eye of seeing how different shapes can fit into other shapes. So there was a lovely example of this in the Tim's released items where learners were asked how many of the red rectangle would be able to fit into the brown rectangle. And learners having some experience of playing with shapes like this can then provide some very important notions around area. So, for example, if learners are able to visualize how that red rectangle can fit three times into the brown rectangle, knowing the red rectangle has an area of 10 will tell them immediately that the brown rectangle has an area of 30. Similarly, they could look at a right-angled triangle like this one and be able to picture that it fits twice into the brown rectangle and so the area of each of those purple triangles is 15. When learners start working with these ideas they actually need experience of physically playing with these shapes so getting some grid paper and cutting out the rectangles and seeing how the one lot of rectangle fits into the other, how triangles can fit into the rectangles and looking at what the area of each of them is, is really powerful and important for learners to do. As they gain more experience and are more able to picture it in their own mind, then one can start to move away from the actual physical playing with the paper or grid paper um, and ask learners to picture, well, how many times will this rectangle be able to fit into that? And therefore, what would the area of this be versus that? Another type of example like this that I like to use is one that gets learners to focus on area and perimeter without any measurements being given. So, for example, if you have a look at this rectangle here, and if I cut it in half and then took those two pieces and just rearranged them to make an L, a question I can ask is how does the area of the rectangle compare with the area of the L? And how does the perimeter of each of them compare? Now, if you have a look at the area story, it's quite easy to see that what you've got is exactly the same area in each case. And that should make sense to us. If we simply cut up and rearrange without doing any overlapping or anything, the area has to remain the same. The perimeter is a little more interesting. So let's have a look at the perimeter. So if we have a look there, that's the same in both the orange, pink and orange. And here again, we've got exactly the same on the rectangle and on the L. But over here, this red piece on the rectangle is sitting there on the L, so isn't part of the perimeter of the L. And then these two pieces here on the L were over there in the rectangle. That's where they came from in the rectangle. And so they're not part of the perimeter of the rectangle. So what we've got is that red piece is in the perimeter of the rectangle and the two brown pieces are in the perimeter of the L and so obviously the perimeter of the L is much greater. This kind of playing around with figures, cutting them up, putting them in different places, rearranging, seeing shapes within shapes are incredibly important ways of honing learners' idea of what area and perimeter is. 
It also is helpful in getting them to develop a geometric eye and to be able to pull apart and see shapes within shapes, which is going to become increasingly important as they move through their work on algebra, I mean, on geometry as well.